So, I will start by talking about uh, independence of random variables when they are jointly distributed. So, um, just again an extension of the same concept uh, that we uh, talked about for a single random variable. Now, um, here um, one can write it in two, three ways x belongs to A and y belongs to B. So, there are two subsets A B of the real line and then uh, your probability this should be equal to probability x belonging to A into probability y belonging to B and this should hold for all possible subsets A B of R. Okay. Now, in other words if the events. So, uh, another way of saying is that this event and this event are independent for all A B subsets of R. Okay. Another way of saying it. Then an equivalent definition of independence of x y would be that you know now you take uh, real numbers a b and then you are saying that x is less than or equal to a y is less than or equal to b then uh, probability is equal to probability x less than or equal to a into this should hold for all a and b and this is if and only if this or you then you know by using the three axioms you can show that uh, this and this are the same. Uh, definitions okay, that uh, you can then take two real numbers and you can describe your events in that way. So, um, then um, so this will immediately uh, imply that your uh, distribution function cumulative distribution function for the joint cumulative distribution function can be written as a product of the uh, individual uh, uh, cumulative distribution functions. Okay. Now, if x and y are discrete then uh, we say that uh, we can uh, you know equivalent way of writing it is or this is how we can if p x comma y is p x x into p y y that means individual uh, probabilities for all x y and surely uh, uh, the, this definition and this definition are the same uh, because this is the general one which covers both continuous and discrete. Now, you can if you just take a as singleton x and b as a singleton y then uh, this follows from here, right? because x equal to a. So, a comma b uh, that means x comma y, if a is simply a singleton, b is also singleton y, then this becomes x comma y and this is probability x into probability y of course, with respect to x and respect to y. Right. So, uh, two uh, I mean two follows from one when you choose the sets a b to be uh, singletons. Right. And the other way also it is valid, because if uh, star is valid for all x y, then um, you can uh, you can write uh, this definition as uh, the, uh, the first part of uh, star as uh, summation p x y x belonging to a y belonging to p that is our definition. Right. But since um, this is uh, x and y are said to be independent, then this can be written as p x x into p y y, where x sum, summing over uh, all x is in a and uh, summing over all y in b, then you can separate out the uh, summations, you can write out this way and therefore, uh, this is uh, probability x equal to uh, okay, I did not ah yeah. So, probability x belonging to A into probability y belonging to B, which is the same as this. So, if this is valid, two follow, uh, star follows and if star is valid, then double star follows. So, this is the whole idea. Okay. Now, um, and of course, uh, an equivalent uh, condition for this uh, for the continuous case would be that uh, the joint P D F can be written as the product of the individual P D F. So, now you have so many equivalent ways of expressing the same concept. I okay. will take this example from Sheldon, Sheldon Ross, uh, interesting to you know again show the uh, computations and the uh, how we make use of independence of uh, random variables. So, here a man and a woman decide to meet at a certain location. If each person independently arrives at a time, which is uniformly distributed between 12 noon and 1 pm. So, the arrival time of both of them is, a ran, uh, is uh, I mean for the man and the woman both is random variable um, are random variables and this is the time is between 12 noon and 1 p m. Right. Now, you have to find the probability that the first to arrive has to wait longer than 10 minutes. 
So, therefore, that is why I converted the p d f as 1 by 60 uh, for uh, each x n. So, here uh, let me define the random variable x as time in minutes past 12 noon, when the man arrives. And similarly, uh, time in minutes past 12 noon, when the woman arrives at the uh, fixed spot. Right? So, both are random variables and um, they are uniformly distributed between 0 and uh, 60. So, that means, the p d f will be 1 by 60 for each. So, when you take the joint p d f, that will be 1 by 60 square. Right? and we will say that uh, x and y bit vary between 0 and 60. Okay. Uh, so, the probability that you are asking for is, uh, x is the probability for the man to arrive. So, if the man arrives first, then x plus 10 should be less than or equal to uh, y. That means, this is the time when the woman arrives. So, the man has to wait, because he is the first to arrive. He has to wait for longer than 10. That is probability x plus 10 less than y, but since x and y are continuous random variables, computation of the required probability is all right. And similarly, if the woman arrives first, then y plus 10 should be less than or equal to x, but since uh, x and y are identically distributed, independence assumed. So, therefore, uh, the two events are the same. Right. So, the, that means, the probability will be exactly the same from symmetry. So, twice probability x plus 10 less than or equal to y. This is what we have to compute. Right. And so, you write down the limits. You see, um, uh, for x, uh, the, for x the limits are 0 to y minus 10. Right. x is less than or equal to y minus 10 and x varies from, because the arrival uh, the person, the, uh, the man can arrive uh, uh, at 12 noon itself. So, then uh, it's, uh, x will be 0. So, x actually varies from 0 to 60. So, here it is 0 to y minus 10 and the man, woman can arrive uh, has to, because uh, uh, the man has to wait 10 minutes or more, then it should be 10 to 60. Right. So, the arrival time of the woman would be from 10 to 60. So, this is what is important. So, once you fix the limits and you know the joint p d f, then computing the probabilities is not a problem. So, one has to spend time in thinking as to how to, uh, so the, uh, the event is described very uh, clearly. So, here uh, the limits for y uh, for the woman so arrival time would have to be from 10 to 60 and this is from 0 to y minus 10. Yes. Okay. So, therefore, uh, you integrate with respect to x and the, uh, so it is simply x. So, y minus 10 by uh, this thing, right. And then, uh, when you integrate with respect to y, it will be y square by 2 minus 10 y from uh, 10 to 60. So, this will be 2 by 60 square and this will be 1 by 2 60 square minus 10 square right and then minus 10 uh, into 60. So, we will continue from here. This was uh, y square by 2 minus 10 y uh, from 10 to 60. So, then this becomes uh, 60 square minus 10 square this one by 2 and minus 10 into 60 plus 10 into Yeah, this is 10 into 10. Right. So, when you compute this from 10 to 60, so this is minus 10 into 60 plus 10 into 10. And so, when you simplify the numbers, this here, uh, this will become 2500 upon 60 square and this is 25 by 36. So, um, desired probability is this much. That means, whoever arrives first at the meeting place will have to wait uh, for more than 10 minutes. The probability of that is 20 upon 36. So, let me continue with the, uh, with the examples of uh, uh, jointly distributed uh, independent random variables. Now, here is an interesting example. It is called the Buffon's needle problem. Buffon was a French naturalist and so, he um, uh, you know, formulated this problem. It says that a uh, table ha has, you know, parallel lines drawn on it and the distance between uh, two uh, par consecutive parallel lines is d. Right. Now, you drop a needle on the table 
And uh, of course, um, one possibility is that the needle lies like this, and so it does not intersect one of the lines, but suppose it does intersect one of the lines. So, that is what we have to uh, find out. So, a needle of length capital L, where L is less than or equal to d, the distance between uh, two consecutive parallel lines is randomly thrown on the table. What is the probability that the needle will intersect one of the lines? So, we have to compute this probability. And now, here um, I have drawn this diagram. So, this is the needle and B is the middle point of the uh, uh, middle point of the needle and uh, you drop a perpendicular from here to the nearest line. So, that is a x. So, that will be a random variable, because you do not know what the position. So, that means, the two random variables that describe the position of the needle uh, is the distance of the center of the needle from the closest nearest line and the angle it makes with the uh, with the uh, nearest line. right? So, that is that uh, angle I am calling as theta. So, this theta and this is the distance which is x. So, these are the two um, this thing and we are saying that you see um, uh, this thing is if this is the center point then this is L by 2 the length of the needle is capital L. So, this length is L by 2 and if your O B is less than L by 2 then uh, the um, uh, needle will intersect the one of the lines. Right. right. So, that way geometrically this is described. And so, this is you know making use of geometry to also explain uh, you know things in uh, probability theory. So, here uh, x is a random variable equal to the distance of the center of the needle from one of the lines. And so, um, now you can see that um, x upon in the right angle triangle O A B. Uh, x upon O b will be sin theta. right? So, uh, sin theta in the right angle triangle O a b x upon O b sin theta or x is O b sin theta that is O b is x upon sin theta. right? And this has to be less than L by 2. So, this is our condition for the uh, needle to intersect one of the uh, parallel lines drawn on the table. Okay. So, um, and x varies from 0 to d by 2. Yes, because uh, it can come up to here, because after that it is the same thing, uh, then it, the position of the uh, line will become like this. So, it, this can up to d by 2 and uh, theta can vary from 0 to uh, that means, either the li, uh, needle almost lies on the parallel line or it uh, makes a uh, you know it stands like this, right. These are the two. So, uh, zero, uh, theta varies from 0 to pi by 2. So, these are the ranges for the two uh, and of course, since uh, uh, any position is equally likely, we will say that uh, both the random variables x and theta are uniformly distributed. Uh, so, x is uniformly distributed in the interval 0 to d by 2 and theta is uniformly distributed from 0 to pi by 2. So, you see then uh, one of the length uh, the density p d f for a uniform random variable is the uh, 1 upon length of the interval in which it is defined. So, here it is pi by 2. So, 2 by pi and here it is 2 by d. So, this is the uh, joint p d f that is 4 upon pi d. So, now you want to integrate you want to want to find out the probability x is less than L by 2 sin theta. Right? This is our condition. So, therefore, um, uh, theta varies from 0 to pi by 2 and x will vary from 0 to L by 2 sin theta. Okay. Uh, then this this is to be into 4 upon pi d d x d theta. So, this is the integral which will give you the required probability and so that is simple enough because with respect to x see this uh, this is independent of x and theta both. So, here you get integral x and so that will be L by 2 sin theta into 4 by pi d and then you integrate respect to d theta here. So, that will be minus cos theta 0 to pi by 2 which is equal to 1. So, the required probability is 2 L upon pi d. So, you know one can construct some interesting uh, examples and so here we use the independence of the two uh, random variables to compute their joint um, p d f and then uh, uh, which which I think I will probably be now, yeah. So, we have already shown this uh, that the uh, joint p d f will be the product of the two uh, marginal p d f s, if the random variables are independent. right? Okay. 
Uh, now, another proposition and uh, this sometimes makes life easy and uh, you can immediately find out the independence of the random variables. So, this is if um, and the, it holds for discrete and continuous both. So, what it, we are saying is that random variable x and y are independent, if and only if their joint density function f x of x comma y can be written as a product of two functions h x and g y. So, this is solely a function of x, this is a function of y and you see the range, the limits are also uh, independent. So, x varies from minus infinity to infinity, y varies from minus infinity to infinity. right? And uh, since, uh, so what we are saying is that, uh, since um, uh, the integral, uh, double integral here uh, is uh, equal to 1, because this is a pdf. So, this implies that uh, uh, when you substitute, when you replace this by h x into g y, uh, the integral separates into two single integrals. And so, this is, this will have to be something like c 1 and this is c 2. So, this product is 1. So, therefore, you see 1 upon c 1 h x will be a p d f and 1 upon c 2 g y will also be a p d f, because by definition this is c 1. So, 1 upon c 1 will be 1 and here 1 upon c 2 will be 1. So, therefore, uh, this is the thing. That means, you will be able, always able to uh, convert these two, since this is a p d f and if it is a product of uh, two such functions, single valued, single variable functions, then you will be able to convert both of them into p d f s. This is the idea. Uh, so, let us just look at a few examples. Um, if uh, your joint density function is given as 12 e raise to minus 3 x into e raise to minus 4 x, this is minus 4 x okay, and x between 0 and infinity, y between 0 and infinity. Then you see I can uh, multiply this by 3 and this by 4. So, this now is your exponential uh, with parameter 3. Right, you immediately recognize it. This also is exponential with parameter 4, and so uh, both are uh, PDFs, and so uh, therefore you conclude because it says if and only if. See, this is the part. So we have told you already that if um, uh, they are independent, then the joint PDF will be a product of the individual PDFs, and here I'm saying that if f x y can be written like this, then again x and y are independent. Okay. So, uh, therefore, uh, I can immediately conclude that x and y are independent, because your f x y can be written as a product of two uh, p d f s. Okay. Then, if you look at this function here, x e raise to minus x plus y. Now, here again, I can break it up into two functions, x into e raise to minus x and this e raise to minus y. So, this I know immediately is exponential uh, with parameter as 1, right? lambda equal to 1, this one. And here I can quickly verify that this is also a p d f, which means that integral of x e raise to minus x from 0 to infinity d x. And if you now um, integrate this by parts, then you get minus e raise to minus x x. Take this as the first function. So, 0 to infinity, this gives you 0. Then you have plus 0 to infinity e raise to minus x d x, which integrates to 1. So, therefore, this is a p d f and this also is a p d f. So, the proposition again tells us that x and y have to be independent random variables. Hmm. So, let me now show you take another example. See f x y is 24 x y and you see here you can decompose it into uh, a function of x and a function of y. So, let us now, but the thing is that uh, the um, uh, area of integration. So, this is uh, x between 0 and 1, y between 0 and 1, but x plus y less than 1. So, you see here the connection is there and therefore, uh, the uh, suspicion is that the two random variables are not independent and we will see. So, I have uh, shown here the area uh, under over which uh, the valid uh, region. So, this is uh, x plus y less than 1, this is the line. So, here uh, in the square is, uh, 1 1, you, uh, this is the area on which you have to concentrate. So, now let me first verify that this is a p d f. So, therefore, you see your range for x will be from 0 to that means, given a value of y. If I am integrating with respect to <coughs> x, then I fix a value of y and then I draw a line. So, therefore, I will be, uh, so my range for x is then from 0 to, see when you fix 1 minus y. So, x varies from 
fixing a y, then uh, my range for x will be 0 to 1 minus y and that is what I have written here 0 to 1 minus y 24 x y d x d y. Okay. And so, you when you integrate with respect to x, this is x square by 2 0 to 1 minus y and so, the integral is uh, the value of the integral is 1 minus y whole square by 2 and uh, here just open it up, take y inside and then you integrate, you, this is what y square by 2 minus 2 y cube by 3 and y 4 by 4 uh, from uh, this is 0 to 1. Sorry. Right. And so, this will be when you substitute the values at 1, you get this which is equal to 1. So, we have verified that the um, PDF, uh, this is a PDF and now you compute um, uh, you compute the uh, marginals and we will sh show that uh, that the uh, product of the marginals is not equal to the uh, joint density function. So, because that condition was if and only if remember. So, here uh, when you integrate with respect to uh, y. So, again this will be now 0 to 1 minus x that means, you have fixed x. So, once you fix an x then your y will vary like this. So, from 0 to uh, you are fixing x. So, y varies from 1 minus x right. So, this this will be the length of the range for uh, y. So, therefore, 0 to 1 minus x x y d y and again this will be x into 1 minus x whole square the same integral that we did and so uh, this will be 12 into x 1 minus x whole square x varies now from 0 to 1. Similarly, the uh, uh, marginal of y same integral because it is symmetric the function is symmetric with respect to x and y both and the uh, limits are also. So, therefore, this will be this and y between 0 and 1. So, you see that f x y is not equal to f x into f the marginals. So, therefore, the two random variables are not independent. So, uh, when you say that you can break up the uh, joint PDF into individual uh, you know functions of the single variables, then uh, make sure that the uh, ranges are also independent. Otherwise, uh, uh, the uh, random variables will not be independent. Okay. So, now, um, so we will continue and then we may be will keep coming back to. So, but independence is a very important concept, it does simplify a lot of things in probability theory. Now, uh, let me uh, start talking about uh, sums of random variables. I have already uh, told you earlier that how we can uh, you know get the distributions for um, uh, sums of independent random variables. So, here again the catch word is independent, we need that. So, now uh, for example, if x and y are two um, uh, random variables which are independent and uh, if um, f x comma y is the joint uh, p d f, then uh, if you want to write uh, the um, uh, distribution function for the random variable x plus y, this will be given by this, which will be. So, now here again the same thing that we used in this case. So, since x plus y less than or equal to t. So, if you are integrating with respect to x, then y is uh, your, uh, your y gets fixed. So, this will be minus infinity to t minus y right to range for x and then y the range for y will be minus infinity to infinity. But since this is uh, uh, x and y are independent. So, this can be written as a product of the individual p d f s, the marginal p d f s. So, therefore, I can separate out my integrals minus infinity to infinity f y y d y and minus infinity to t minus y f x x d x. Right. And so, this uh, you know it gives you what? This is the probability of capital X less than or equal to t minus y. Right. So, therefore, this is your cumulative distribution function for x at t minus y, right, this integral and this is the integral minus infinity to infinity f y y d y. So, this is called convolution of because here this is um, um, the distribution function for x at t minus y, right, minus infinity to y. Well, not exactly you are uh, Oh, uh, well, I'm I'm writing uh, small f y d y. So anyway, this will be called as a convolution because this is at y and this is at t minus y. But I'll make things more clear here. See now, if you want to, uh, if I differentiate this with respect to uh, t, then I get the uh, PDF for x plus y, right? And uh, you see that here, this is this, 
And remember, we have done it already. We can exchange the integral and the derivative sign, provided this thing here is uh, differentiable. And so, um, I take the derivative inside. Uh, this gives me this. And uh, this now f x t minus y d d t will give me the uh, p d f of x at t, t minus y, and this is f y y d y minus. So, now this is also this you can see better as a convolution of the two p d f's f x and f y. So, f y y then f x is t minus y, where we are looking at the uh, event this less than or equal to t. So, this is called the convolution and sometimes it comes in handy, but I um, will try to show you again uh, uh, that means, my philosophy is that you should try to use geometry uh, and direct methods as much as possible to get answers. The formulae are important and sometimes they are very helpful and I have shown you that at times it has helped us to uh, use uh, the derived formulae to get the uh, result, but sometimes it also helps to uh, do things directly. So, let us take this example. Sum of two uniformly distributed uh, independent random variables x and y on the interval 0 1. So, now I want to find out the p d f of the uh, of the random variable x plus y, where both x and y are uniformly distributed on the interval 0 1 and they are independent. Right. So, then um, uh, the variable z, which represents the sum will now vary from 0 to 2 because this varies from 0 to 1, this varies from 0 to 1. So, the sum can vary from 0 to 2. So, as I am saying, we will do it ab initio without using a formula directly. I will try to compute the uh, cumulative uh, distribution function and see. So, uh, so, therefore, the diagram is here 0 to 1, 0 to 1, x axis, y axis. Now, uh, you see uh, what happens is when you, uh, if your t is less than or equal to 1. See, t equal to 1 gives you this line, right? x plus y equal to 1 and this portion is covered by t greater than 1. So, as long as t is less than 1, you see this is uniform. So, that means, uniform mass over this region. So, therefore, to get this probability, I just need to compute the area of this triangle. So, to get probability x plus y less than or equal to t, it is simply the area of this this, because the joint density function is what? Your joint density function is 1, 1 into 1, which is 1, right, because both are uniform on the interval 0, 1. So, um, the mass spread over is, uh, you know, the same uniform uh, unit. And so, uh, the uh, area of the uh, valid region would be your uh, probability. So, here as long as t is less than or equal to 1, the area. So, therefore, if you take this or you take this, then it will always be the area of this triangle. So, therefore, this is half t square, right, because this side is t and this is side t. So, base and height are both t. So, half t square for 0 less than t less than 1. Now, when t becomes more than 1, then you see it is no longer, because it is this region which is a triangle, but you need this area. So, therefore, what I will do is from the total area 1, I will subtract the area of this triangle and that will give me the required probability. right? So, uh, now, uh, so this, this line is x plus y equal to t and therefore, it intersects x equal to 1 at t minus. So, therefore, the y point is t minus 1, because t is greater than 1. Similarly, this is t minus 1 1. So, then this length both these lengths, this, this point is 1 1. So, when you do it uh, 1 minus t of uh, minus 1 plus 1, so 2 minus t. So, this length is 2 minus t, this is length is also 2 minus t. So, the area of that triangle is half 2 minus t whole square and therefore, the required probability is 1 minus 1 by 2 into 2 minus t whole square, when t lies between 1 and 2. So, see looking at the diagram, things become really simple and therefore, uh, when you differentiate this with respect to t, in this case it becomes t 0 less than t less than 1 and uh, for this, because there is a minus sign a minus sign. So, 2 2 cancels 2 minus t as uh, t varies between 1 and 2. So, now if you draw the picture graph of f to t uh, between 0 and 1, it is given by this line and between uh, 1 and 2, it is given by 
this line. So, it is a triangle. So, therefore, this is also known as a triangular distribution. Okay. Now, I leave it to you to try the uh, try out the convolution formula uh, and then see that you should get the same answer. So, you can uh, sit down and verify for yourself. Uh, the formula is clear here for different values of t, you will have to. Uh, so, here of course, your this thing will be from 0 to 2, because your t can vary from, but looking at the diagram things really become simple and you can. So, wherever possible use geometry or direct methods. Now, um, trying to look at this example, uh, where you know you have x is uniform 0 1 and y is exponential with parameter 1 and x and y are independent. So, uh, now we want to look at uh, the, so the joint density function of x and y will be just the product of the individual uh, p d f s. So, this is for the uniform it is 1 and for the uh, exponential it is e raise to minus, oh God, I should have written e minus y. <laughs> So, this is yeah, it is ok here, I just wrote here e minus y. And so, your y varies um, from 0 to infinity, x is between 0 and 1. So, now you want to find out the probability uh, that x plus y is less than or equal to a t. That means, this is your f of x plus y t, this is what we found, want to find out. And so, see now here, what I have right now written is um, when 0 is less than t, less than or equal to 1. So, you see um, the region of integration as I had told you is um, x between 0 and 1 and y uh, non negative. So, going to infinity. So, this is the region for integration and I was trying to tell you that we have to separate out uh, the integration into two parts, because you see for x plus y uh, less than or equal to t as long as t is between 0 and 1, then this is this area which will has to be covered. So, therefore, for example, if you take the line x plus y equal to t if this is the line, then the limits for uh, x are from 0 to t and for y will be from 0 to t minus x. Okay. So, therefore, the, uh, for t between 0 and 1, these are the limits and so you can therefore, integrate respect to y first. So, that will be 1 minus e raise to minus t minus x, because the integral of this will be minus e raise to minus y and so uh, from 0 to 1 minus e of minus of t minus x d x and then you integrate the spec to x the limits are 0 to t and so uh, this will be x and because this is plus x. So, this will remain minus e raise to minus t of minus x from 0 to t and therefore, this is your um, cumulative density function for t between 0 and 1. Right Now, for um, t greater than 1 uh, the lines would be like this right x plus y equal to t which is greater than 1. So, in that case your uh, for a given x your y will vary like this from 0 to t minus x right and x will vary from 0 to 1, because when you are talking of t greater than 1 this is this line then x will vary from 0 to 1 and t will vary from 0 to t minus x and therefore, um, for t between 1 and infinity it will be 0 to 1 0 to t minus x e raise to my minus y d y d x. Then again the same integration this one is exactly the same and then uh, from 0 to 1 with respect to x. So, this will be minus e raise to minus t minus 1 plus e raise to minus t plus 1. So, please just verify that these are valid uh, cumulative density functions. Of course, here um, as t goes to 0, this goes to 0, right? t goes to 0, this is 0 and this is 1. So, 1 minus 1 is 0 and as t and from here as t goes to infinity, you can see that um, this will go to 1, because this will go to 0, this will go to 0 and you will be left with 1. Okay. Uh, have I written it correctly here? Okay, let us just make sure that as t goes to infinity, yeah, then this goes to infinity also, and so uh, uh, e raise to minus of t minus one also goes to zero. So therefore, uh, the limiting value is one. So this is the valid uh, cumulative density function, and therefore now we want to compute the uh, PDF. Then just differentiate. So this will be one minus e raise to minus t as t is between zero and one, and um, this one here would be uh, minus e raise to minus t and then this will be plus 
e raise to minus of t minus 1. So, this is your p d f for. So, therefore, uh, you know all these things as you work out and uh, get experience, you can get a feeling how to go about and the diagram in of course, you can do it in two or three dimensions. So, therefore, the diagram helps to tell you that you have to break up the integration into two parts. So, uh, for uh, between 0 and 1 for t between 0 and 1, the limits for x are different and when uh, when t is greater than 1, the limits become different. So, therefore, this can only you can get the feeling by looking at the uh, figure and then uh, you know deciding accordingly. Okay. So, we continue with some more of uh, these examples. So, expectation of x plus y is equal to expectation x plus expectation y. Right. So now, let us just try to first show this under independence of x and y. So, uh, then I can write the joint density function as the product of uh, individual density functions and so, uh, e of x plus y oh, uh, this should be uh, x plus y also. So, you are integrating um, x plus y uh, integral minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity x plus y into f x x into f y y d x d y. So, I have written the uh, joint density function as the product of individual density functions and so therefore, um, one can then uh, separate out the integral. So, this will be x f x x f y y d, d x d y and here it will be y. Now, then uh, since uh, if you integrate respect to y then integral f y of y d y will be 1 because this is a pdf of y and so you will be left with x f x x d x minus infinity to infinity and similarly here integration with respect to x will result in 1 and so you will get uh, uh, integral minus infinity to infinity y f y y d y and this is e x plus e y. But I want to point out that it is not necessary to show this result um, you do not need independence of x and y actually it is always true and uh, that you can immediately verify, because if um, x y is the joint density p, p d f of x y, joint p d f of x and y, then e of x plus y we write in this way, right? integral double integral minus infinity to infinity x plus y f x y, yeah, this is this of x comma y. Then um, again I write this as sum of two integrals which is this and this, but uh, uh, you know uh, making the same argument that minus infinity to infinity of f x y x y d y will give you f x the marginal density of uh, x and then. So, it will be um, come out to be integral x into marginal of x density function of x plus similarly y you first integrate with respect to x here to get the marginal of y and then you get this right and therefore, this is e x plus e y. So, for uh, showing that e of x plus y is e x plus e y, you do not need independence of x and y, but under independence we can show um, another result, which is that expectation of x y product of x and y is actually uh, product of the expectations. So, this is e x into e y right and this uh, the for this I will uh, need independence, because now I will write e x y as this double integration x y and the joint can be written as the product of the marginals. So, f x x into f y y d x d y and uh, now here again I can separate out the integrals. So, this is uh, integral x f x d x minus infinity to infinity into minus infinity to infinity y f y d y and now each of this this is e x and this is e y and so I get this as the product. And this result now I will prove in uh, while showing that the uh, under independence variance of x plus y is equal to variance of x plus variance of y, which holds only when x and y are independent. So, therefore, um, once we have shown this result, we can now derive that result. To compute the variance of x plus y, we will require uh, the, uh, the, the result that I am giving right now, we will use independence of the variables x and y. So, let me just write down variance x plus y is expected value of x plus y minus e x minus e y whole square. Right. So, I um, open up the square term then this will be x minus e x whole square plus um, sorry this should not be there plus uh, y minus e y whole square plus twice x minus e x into y minus e y. 
Now, from linearity of the expectation function, we have seen it earlier that uh, the, the, it, uh, the expected function is a linear function. So, it follows that uh, the uh, expected value of the whole expression, I can take expectation inside and therefore, this will be expectation of x minus e x whole square plus expectation of y minus e y whole square plus twice expectation of x minus e x into y minus e y. Now, this is the place where I will use the linearity of x and y, because if x and y are independent sorry uh, the independence of x and y. If x and y are independent, then x minus e x into y minus e y are also independent, this being a constant. So, uh, uh, it can immediately be uh, concluded that if x and y are independent, then x minus e x and y minus e y are also independent. Therefore, the expectation of the product can be the is equal to the um, product of the expectations and therefore, um, this product expectation of this product is equal to expectation of x minus e x into expectation of y minus e y. And so, now here you see that this will be e x minus e x which is 0 into e y minus e y which is also 0. So, the whole thing is 0. And so, um, this expression this expression reduces to simply expectation of x minus e x whole square plus expectation of y minus e y whole square which is equal to variance x plus variance y. So, um, uh, when trying to compute the variance of uh, sum of two variables, two random variables, then I need uh, uh, I mean if to be able to write it like this, I need x and y to be independent. Now, um, let me show you uh, what the independence uh, means to us and of course, uh, interesting relationships between the various PDFs that we have discussed or special kinds of random variables. Now, if x is gamma s lambda, that means the parameters s and lambda and y is g, uh, par, uh, with parameter gamma with parameters t and lambda. Okay. So, lambda is the same, but these two numbers differ. Then x and y and x and x and y are independent, then x plus y is gamma s plus t comma lambda. That means, the first parameters, if the second parameter is the same, then the first one get added up, when you add up the uh, uh, two random variables. Okay. And this I will show you using the MGF, because uh, oh, okay. uh, I missed out on the MGF. So, MGF is also straightforward, because this is expectation of e raise to t x plus y. So, then um, uh, this will, because I will write it as e into t x and into e into t y. Right, this this function I can write as this. Then again, I just told you that yeah. So you might say that why are these independent? That can also be shown that if two functions are independent, then their uh, functions are also independent. Of course, under certain condition. But e raise to t x and e raise to t y are also independent random variables. So when I write expectation of the product, that will be the product of the expectations. See, there is nothing much to uh, you can actually. Uh, use the uh, again write the joint this thing, because the joint density function will again be the product of individual uh, 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 PDFs. So, even ex when you write this function here in as an integral, you will separate out the integrals and again just as we prove this result exactly you can show that this expectation is equal to the product of the expectations. Right? So, then that means, if x and y are independent, then their m g f of the sum is the product of the individual moment generating functions. So, that is the important result and that is what I am going to use here. So, I am showing you that uh, we know that uh, when x is gamma s lambda, its uh, moment generating function is given by lambda upon lambda minus t raise to s okay. and the uh, moment generating function of g t comma lambda is lambda upon lambda minus t raise to t. Okay. And so, the sum would be the product of the m g f. So, the m g f of the sum is the uh, product of the m g f s and so, this uh, becomes lambda upon lambda minus t raised to s plus t. So, now I am uh, uh, concluding immediately that this that means, the uh, p d f of x plus y is gamma with parameters s plus t comma lambda. While uh, defining m g f for you and looking at its properties, I had mentioned that um, uh, an m g f uniquely characterizes the p d f of the random variable. If you know the m g f uh, of a random variable, then you can tell from uh, what is the p d f of that random variable. Uh, this uh, can also be proved. Uh, uh, 
but I will simply use the result here. And so, therefore, um, once I know that the m g f of x plus y is of this form, then I will conclude that this that means, the p d f of x plus y must be s plus t comma lambda. Okay. And now, let me uh, this uh, I had already mentioned this relationship uh, between the exponential and gamma. I had said that exponential lambda is gamma 1 comma lambda. Okay. That means, the first parameter is 1 and the, this is the common thing. So, when you have an exponential random variable, it is also gamma 1 comma lambda. Now, if x and y are independent uh, exponential uh, lambda random variables, okay, both having the same parameter, then uh, by this result x plus y will be gamma 2 comma lambda. So, I am using this result here that the first parameters get added up if the second parameter is the same, since the exponential uh, x and y both are exponential with. So, with they are both gamma 1 comma lambda. So, their sum will be gamma 2 comma lambda and so on. Right. So, um, and now what I am trying to say here is that uh, you this ex, uh, concept of independence of two variables can be extended to many more. In the discrete case, I had already shown you that uh, uh, characterizing the independence of more than two variables becomes tedious, but uh, we can anyway use the end result. So, here see the thing is that you can sequentially use this result uh, you know about uh, m g f s about variance and expectation. So, what we are saying is that if x 2 uh, first of all you have two variables. So, x 2 and x 1 are independent. Then uh, once you have this, then you can apply that x 3 is independent of x 1 comma x 2. So, then you can apply the result that means, you can go on adding. So, what I am trying to say here is that if you have two exponential uh, random variables both with the same parameter, I add them. So, I get a gamma 2 comma lambda, then I add x 3 to it. So, that means, I will be talking of x 1 plus x 2 plus x 3. So, this will become 3 comma lambda. So, the concept can be uh, recursively used. So, here uh, then you will say that x 4 is independent of these 3 and so on. So, finally, x 1 is independent of x 1, x 2 up to x n minus 1. So, this is the whole idea. So, therefore, now I can say that when you have gamma s comma lambda, where s is an integer. So, if you look at this result, uh, then uh, uh, s is an integer. So, gamma s comma lambda is the sum of s independent exponential lambda random variables. Okay. So, when s is an integer, uh, gamma distribution has been built up by adding uh, exponential distributions uh, s of them. Right. And uh, if you remember, when I was talking of the uh, gamma distribution and then we were looking at the. So, we had said that uh, suppose there is a service counter and um, there are people ahead of you who are n minus 1, you are the nth person, then uh, uh, gamma n lambda you can say that means the time that you have to spend. And we had said that if the uh, time uh, taken to service each customer is exponential uh, with parameter lambda, then the total time uh, till the nth person gets serviced. That means, uh, th this is this includes the servicing of n minus 1 people ahead of him and then the nth person is this person. So, when then total n people get serviced, that will become gamma n lambda. So, this was the connection right and so we I had used this and I had told you that we will be able to show this prove this result also that uh, the uh, n exponential distributions with the same parameter lambda will add up to a gamma distribution with parameters n comma lambda. So, I will continue this exploration uh, more in the uh, in coming lectures. Okay.